welcome to the Jay and Susie Gouge Performing Arts Center at Auburn University. I'm Jonathan Osborne, the Director of Marketing and Communications here. So thank you so much for being here. On behalf of everyone at the Gouge Center and on behalf of the City of Auburn, I'd like to thank you for being here with us tonight for Mayor Ron Anders' inaugural State of the City Address. It's our privilege to host this historic event. And like many of you, we are very fortunate to enjoy a warm and collegial relationship with the city and more important, with its leaders. So thank you to all of the city leaders who are here with us this evening. We appreciate your service and dedication, not only to the city, but to the citizens of Auburn. So thank you very much. And now if you'll please join me in welcoming the voice of the Auburn Tigers, Andy Burcham. Good evening, and thank you for being here for tonight's Mayor Anders' inaugural State of the City Address. A lifelong resident of Auburn, Anders has been an active member of the community. He worked tirelessly to bring the Alabama High School Athletic Association's annual Super 7 Championship to Auburn and established a rotating schedule between Auburn University's Jordan-Hare Stadium and the University of Alabama's Bryant-Denny Stadium. He was instrumental in recruiting organizing and leading the 50th anniversary Dixie Youth World Series event to Auburn in 2005 and created the Auburn Raptors, the largest youth basketball organization in the state of Alabama. Since 2015, Anders has served as the director of special projects for Tailgate Guys Auburn Crew. He previously served, of course, 20 years as the CEO of Anders Bookstore, a family-owned business that was established on Magnolia Avenue in 1966. A multi-generational venture, Anders grew up working in the store with his father and grandfather and took over as company president until the business was sold in 2005. In November of 2018, after six years on the Auburn City Council and years of service to the community, Ron Anders was sworn into office as Auburn's first new mayor in 20 years. Mayor Anders chose this venue tonight because of the partnership that it personifies between the city of Auburn and Auburn University, and the fruits that partnership yields for both the campus and the community. Please join me in welcoming Auburn Mayor Ron Anders, Jr. Good evening. Thank you, Andy, for being here. And certainly if there's one person that personifies courage and hanging in there and everything that you and your family have been through this year, man, so many people behind you and thank you for what you've done. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to stand before you this evening in this wonderful venue on the campus of this wonderful university in this wonderful town to deliver my first State of the City address as your mayor. A year ago, I took my oath of office I knew serving as a mayor would be both a rewarding and challenging. I had no idea just how right I was on both counts. The first year has challenged us in ways that we never, ever expected. Our community was shocked when we heard that Officer Just Justin Sanders was shot in the line of duty. Not long after, we were devastated again when we heard that Officers Evan Elliott, Webb Sistrunk, and William Beekner were shot in the line of duty and that tragically, Officer Beekner did not survive. We were also heartbroken for our friends and neighbors in Lee County who lost their loved ones and homes to a tornado. These are things that we never thought would happen in our community. But in all that darkness, there was light. The light of those officers, heroes in the truest sense of the word, shone brightly. As did the light of their fellow, their fellow officers, firefighters, and communication staff who continued to do their duty to protect and serve our community in spite of the profound sadness and loss that they felt. In the light of so many volunteers who gave of their time, energy, and resources to help in the rescue and rebuilding after the tornado, we came together to support each other and to support families in need. Even in our horror and grief, we showed the true spirit of the Auburn family. I'm proud to be part of such a caring community. Families are connected because of love, and we're all connected because we love Auburn with all that we are and all that we have. We want what's best for this place and for everyone who calls it home. 
That's why I sought to serve you on the city council and as mayor, and it's why I'm grateful to have a chance to stand before you today to talk about what we're doing to help make and maintain Auburn as the best that it can be. The light in you inspires me to try to do my best to help Auburn shine even more brightly. I'm standing before you in an amazing arts and entertainment facility that wasn't even here a year ago. It sits across the street from an equally amazing museum. Both represent our strong partnership with Auburn University and our mutual commitment to education and the community. Together, these facilities provide a new sense of place as you enter Auburn. Thousands in our community have visited and will continue to visit the room that we're in tonight to enjoy the finest in music, plays, dance, and community events. This facility represents a new quality of life opportunities for us all. Thank you to everyone involved in making this project the best it can be for Auburn for cre creating this new shining light in our community. The Gooch Performing Arts Center represents the reward that can come with Auburn's growth and change. It is no secret that Auburn is a great place to be. One of the best places to live in America according to this year's list from money.com. We have a great education system, not only from K to 12, but K through PhD. We have a robust economy built on a strong foundation of economic development and fiscal conservatism. And this year alone, Auburn has been named the best performing small city by the Millican Institute, a best, place for, a best small place for business and careers by Forbes, a best city to live in Alabama by the Chamber of Commerce.org, a top 20 college town in which to start a career by MSN's Business Insider, and a top retirement destination by both Where to Retire magazine and Southern Living. We're proud of these accolades, but we want to make sure that we don't rest on them. We must never become complacent or take the quality of our community for granted. Recognitions like these should spur us on to continue improving and to set even higher standards for public service. In my first year of mayor, we have hit the ground running to listen and provide the transparency that you asked for. Our council meetings have always been transparent open to all who wish to come with the agenda packet we get on Fridays available to the public online at the same time. This council has made that already more transparent, or made that already transparent process even more with live stream and live caption council meetings on YouTube, Facebook, AuburnAlabama.org, and on the radio. That live streaming is just one part of up in the ante on being, a more, intentional, on being more intentional about our communication. In addition to subscribing to our e-notifier to receive our press releases and meeting announcements, you can find public meetings listed on our meeting calendar on the city's website, auburnalabama.org. Auburn we echo our web and e-notify our press releases, meeting announcements, and more on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Our increased social media presence has included the Mayor's Minutes, a short video after every city council meeting that gives me a chance to summarize the meeting for you and to share what I think are the most important takeaways from each meeting. You can see a short version of this on Instagram and a longer version on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, usually the day after the council meeting. All of this gives you a number of ways to hear from me, the council, and the city, but we also want to hear from you. Toward that end, we've doubled the opportunities for citizens' communications at council meetings, once to talk about the items on the agenda, and then again to talk about whatever's on your mind. We know that having access to your elected officials is important, and we've done this to give you a direct line of communication in a public forum. We value your voice, and we want to hear what you have to say about our community. My door at City Hall is always open for you and my phone number and email address and that of every council member are available on the city's website. As we allow more time for discussion at council meetings, we've streamlined those meetings to increase the efficiency of the business that we conduct. This includes adding a consent agenda to our council meetings so that we can consider routine items in one vote. And of course, any council person can pull any item off the consent agenda so that we can discuss it in a more in-depth for the public record. Since we've implemented these changes, I believe we've seen more and more meaningful discussion during our council meetings. Early on in my tenure as your mayor, I identified four areas where I felt like this community needed to have a conversation. Boards and commissions, diversity and inclusion, short-term rentals, and student housing. To that end, I've appointed, I appointed four task force to address these important issues that I heard about from you during my campaign for mayor. 
A Boards and Commissions Task Force was the first to the finish line with a new advertisement and application process to help the council recruit and vet applicants for our 22 boards and commissions. Some boards, such as the Planning Commission and Board of Education, now go through a deeper selection process that includes interviews. The goal of this task force was to widen the applicant pool for all of our boards to increase the number and the diversity of our applicants. Just last week, we held our first annual Boards and Commissions Fair to help educate everyone about our boards and commissions and the application process. The Short-Term Rental Task Force has created two different draft ordinances based on input from public hearings and discussions at publicly held task force meetings. While the mission of this task force is complete, the work on this issue continues with the Planning Commission considering an appropriate ordinance to forward to the City Council for approval in the near future. The Student Housing Task Force has conducted focus groups and held numerous meetings on the future of student housing in our community. We've assembled a comprehensive inventory of student housing and continue to research and analyze the issue of student housing. Ultimately, this will lead, in, will lead to a time in the not too distant future where the task force will publicly present its recommendations. Our Diversity and Inclusion Task Force has held multiple meetings to discuss diversity in Auburn. As a team, we've been through diversity training and we've vis visited the Legacy Museum in Montgomery. Both of those experiences and the team building they brought will guide our way in our work as we move into the future. This has been personally meaningful to me as I've made new relationships, new friendships that I would have never been a part, that I would never have apart from this task force. Looking ahead to the future, sustainability is another area ripe for conversation. Auburn has a lot to be proud of when it comes to sustainability. We constructed the new Tumors Corner with sustainability in mind from the permeable pavers that let rainwater into the ground to the sylvia cells that sustain our Auburn oaks and street trees in an urban environment. The forthcoming new public safety building has multiple bioretention gardens and applications of permeable pavers. Auburn was the first community in Alabama to offer curbside recycling and we regularly offer household hazardous waste collection days and a fats, oils and grease recycling program. The City of Auburn is committed to seek and evaluate and integrate emerging technologies and products into our work processes, including green building elements and alternative fuels. Our Environmental Services Department is committed to developing new methods to further reduce the tonnage of solid waste, hauled to landfills, and increase recycle participation. From our urban forestry management program to our greenways and back bikeways master plan, the list goes on. But as I said in our media accolades, we don't want to rest on these accomplishments. We want to keep innovating and we want to continue down the path toward more sustainable practices. As mayor, I've continued the commitment to great partnerships that was a hallmark of Bill Ham's tenure. If you know me at all, you know that one of my passions is supporting our youth so that they can fulfill their greatest potential. They are our brightest lights and our best hope. Because of this, I've deepened the city's relationship with the Auburn University Student Government Association so that we can work closely with them on issues of importance to the student body. Our students are our citizens for the years that they are here. Many of them were born and raised in Auburn. Many of them will stay here when they graduate or return later in life. We owe it to them and to ourselves to hear their voice. Because of that, I've committed to monthly meetings with the Student Government Association so that we can hear from each other on issues of mutual interest. Because it's important that we hear from everyone that is a member of the Auburn family, it's important that we don't segment groups from the whole. Be it students or members of a ward, a geographic area, or other group, every Auburn resident has an interest in everything about Auburn. Every Auburn council person has the hard task of making decisions for the good of Auburn as a whole and not just their ward. The council is elected by ward with a mayor at large, but the council as a body represents 65,000 65, Auburn residents as a whole. Every decision we make affects everyone, no matter where you live in our community. That is why we must ensure that our decisions and the resources that we allocate represent and impact all of Auburn. Every ward, every geographic area, every community within Auburn deserves the same attention, access to the same resources as any other ward. We are all equally Auburn. With that in mind, we're proud that our citizen survey over the years has given us a representative data showing that satisfaction, satisfaction with the city, with city services, is not only generally high, but that is not significantly lower or higher in any ward or geographic area in our city. It's why our school board is proud that our parents don't have to choose where they live in Auburn based on school district, because all of our schools offer the same level of safety, 
the same quality of education, the same opportunities for our children. Just this month, our school system announced this year's educational report card from the state of Alabama. All of our city schools received an A, and our system as a whole received a 94. Auburn City Schools is only one of eight systems out of 137 in Alabama to earn straight A's on the report card from the state. Congratulations. The Auburn City Council, as well as the community at large, has shown unwavering support for Auburn City Schools over the years. I'm proud that we've continued that support on this council. I'm proud of our community for approving the continued use of the five mil fund as a funding mechanism for Auburn City Schools as they make major renovations to Kerry Woods Elementary School and J.F. Drake Middle School. School facilities will continue to be a priority as they grow with the official school enrollment this year at 8,885, up 174 students from last year. Beyond education, we're focusing on ways to make Auburn better for everyone. A new parking deck with more than 300 spaces is in the works for downtown Auburn, and $40 million in capital projects are underway to provide more recreational and cultural spaces and opportunities for our community. As Auburn grows, our Parks and Recreation Department is seeing an increase in those signing up for youth sports and programs. This is a welcome anomaly. While youth programs across the nation are seeing a decline in participation, our staff continues to foster programs that parents and their children want to be a part of. To keep up with the demand, we're working on new ventures like a joint skate park with our sister city in Opelika, a new passive park on East Glen Avenue, an inclusive playground at Town Creek Park. We're also working on new softball and baseball fields at the forthcoming Society Hill Park, additions to the soccer complex and a new community center at Lake Wilmore Park that will include a new pool, dog park, space for senior programs, and two gymnasiums. And, that, and, and these are just the beginning. We're working on other projects that were recommended in Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Master Plan. Over the next 20 years, you can expect to see many more opportunities for recreation and culture throughout our community. While you're driving your children from school to practice to dance lessons, it's important to us that you be able to get from point A to point B safely and efficiently. To this end, we've installed new sidewalks on Pleasant Avenue. Moore's Mill Road, Hamilton Road, and Annaloo Drive. We've widened Wire Road and Richland Road and have made improvements to the intersection of Martin Luther King Drive and Richland Road. And starting in December of last year, we began our effort in the Connect Auburn planning effort. Getting your input on where new greenways and bikeways were needed and where we needed to make some improvements to existing ones. We wrapped up the input period in May of this year and once we received the final draft of the plan, we'll begin programming improvements into our budget. We've made improvements to downtown, upgrading the intersections of Glen Avenue at College Street and Gay Street to improve safety for all modes of transportation. We're wrapping up improvements to Wright Street, widening the sidewalk, reworking on street parking and converting the road to a two-way street. We continued our work on making our traffic signals smart to help move traffic through Auburn and reduce traffic congestion. Through our annual Keep Auburn Beautiful Neighborhood Cleanup Project, five city departments came together over a week this past May to help improve a section of Northwest Auburn. We collected 5.5 tons of bulky yard debris, handed out 100 oak tree plantings, and inspected and restored road signs and painted curbs. We inspected, cleaned, painted, and tested 22 fire hydrants in the area, and we edged curbs, mowed grass, collected litter, and swept all the streets in the area. Deeper than just to appearance, we repaired sidewalks and made them more accessible for everyone on Boykin and Foster Streets, pouring 111 yards of concrete in the process. Our crews also completed 23 tons of asphalt patchwork and cleaned 465 feet of storm drain pipe in the area. Outside of this cleanup project, we've invested $24.4 million in Northwest Auburn over the last 16 years. These dollars trans translate to 18 completed sewer, stormwater, and drainage projects. They funded 21 street paving, resurfacing, wide, resurfacing, widening, realigning projects, and 19 sidewalk projects. These funds also represent a significant investment in the Boykin Community Center, which has become a true hub of our community service efforts. It houses daycares, the Boys and Girls Club, a senior center, a gym and fitness center, a new healthcare clinic is in the works through a partnership with Auburn University to serve the uninsured 
and underinsured in our community. To sustain all of these incredibly vital services to our community, we've invested nearly $3 million in the facility over the last 16 years, with, a, with another $1.5 million projected in the near future. These funds will go towards a new technology resource center with a community computer lab and further improvements to parking, pedestrian paths, and landscaping. The center is also home to our community services department, which works each year to spend our community development block grant funds wisely and where they're needed. The department has helped 46 families make repairs to their homes, helped 33 people become homeowners, invested $5.2 million in housing, and funded 25 programs that provide services to low to moderate income families and individuals, all right here in Auburn. That includes Mr. Billy Jackson, now a nine-year, thank you. Congratulations to that department for doing a great job. That includes Mr. Billy Jackson, now a nine-year resident of Auburn. Before Mr. Jackson lived in Lochapoca and was commuting to Auburn as a crew leader in our public works department. Mr. Jackson went through the application process with our staff and was able to get the assistance he needed to purchase his first home. He is a homeowner in the Northwest Village subdivision, which includes 29 homes that the city built to provide more affordable housing in the area. Now, almost 10 years later, Mr. Jackson still lives in his three-bedroom, two-bath house and is grateful for the opportunity he received years ago. Because of stories like these, we are not done. Along with the Boykin Community Center improvements, we're going to install irrigation and make other enhancements at the Westview Cemetery. We'll invest in the sidewalk and lighting, we'll invest in sidewalk and lighting improvements and we'll improve access to parks and make more roadway improvements. Extending their reach outside of Northwest Auburn, our public works are heavily invested in keeping all of Auburn beautiful by keeping our ecosystems healthy from the tallest tree to the deepest creek. An invasive species removal project is underway at Town Creek Park where our Parks and Recreation and Public Works crews partnered with the Auburn Tree Commission to remove 26 invasive plants along the historic tree trail. This spring they will go back and plant species that are appropriate for our region, replacing that which once stifled their growth. Public Works crews led efforts to make sure the medians in front of this facility we're in tonight were ready for the center's grand opening in August. Now those crews are working to install more permanent landscaping in this area. They've completed landscape improvements at the Boykin Community Center and throughout downtown, and they've continued to work with our judicial and environmental services departments to keep our streets and roadsides free of litter. Often working out of sight, often working on the out of sight things that make our city run. Water resource our Water Re Resource Management Department won the Alabama's Water and Environmental Association's Plant Excellent War excellence award for our H.C. Morgan water pollution control facility. This was the second year in a row we've received this very prestigious honor. Our sewer division installed a new sewer main on Toomer Street and they're continuing a long-term program to monitor our sewer lines that help us respond, respond to potential issues as quickly as possible. Water resource management is also planning for the future by constructing a new well in South Auburn. With a capacity of 4.4 million gallons per day, the new well will bring our water supply up to 17.3 million gallons per day. Currently, our city uses less than 8 million gallons per day, and projected daily demands won't reach 13 million gallons per day until almost 2050. Adding this new source ensures diversity of our water sources, helping to strengthen the resiliency of our overall water system, particularly in times of drought, natural disasters, or other emergencies. We've also begun evaluating the potential for our new water treatment plant at Lake Ogletree. Over the last year, our planning department, planning department and staff completed two studies that have yielded changes to our zoning ordinance. These studies are designed to make sure future developments and redevelopments fit in with the surroundings, including having the right densities. These were the Harper Avenue plan and the Glenn Dean plan, both of which the council adopted in the spring of this past year. Moving into 2020, the department set its sights on two more study areas, including 24 acres along and near US Highway 280 and over 2,400 acres along and near Highway 14. As we continue to grow out toward these areas, we have to move forward with a clear vision of what we want our community to look like. Planning also spent a lot of time this year working with the community, the Planning Commission and the City Council on the new academic detached dwelling unit designation. 
which gave us a more effective means to accommodate this unique type of student housing. And as all this development continues, our inspection services department has completed 23,202 inspections, 31% of which were commercial developments and 69% which were residential. That means that our inspectors completed an average of 89 inspections a day throughout the year to make sure developments are meeting the standards that, should be, that, that they should be to create safe, reliable housing and businesses in our community. These numbers impress, are impressive from a customer service standpoint, but again, we can never rest on our laurels. The Auburn City staff is always striving to provide more and better customer service. One way we're doing that is with the release of the new Auburn Fix It app which will allow you to request city services and report non-emergency concerns directly from your phone or other electronic device. Look for that free app in your Apple or Android app store within the next few weeks. Or you can always just use your phone the old-fashioned way and call any of our facilities for friendly answers to whatever questions you may have. The city's website has the names of the people you can call and the respective phone numbers. Those inspection statistics I mentioned are also impressive in terms of the local business development that they reflect. We've seen a number of new commercial additions to our community, particularly along Opelika Road, where we have invested millions in infrastructure to support and spur growth in that area. The Auburn Mall continues to grow and evolve, most recently with work to convert the old J.C. Penney's Anchor Store into a new main entrance and ex with an exterior store frontage. We work with the whole property group to find inventive ways to bring new life to the shopping area. While other malls across the nation are declining, ours has grown, bringing in new out parcels like Krispy Kreme, Starbucks, and the old time country buffet. This development has spurred growth across the street with the new Michaels and facade improvements at both Flint's Crossing and the Market Square shopping areas. We've also seen new businesses like Another Broken Egg, A New Moe's Barbecue, Smoothie King, and others come to the Bent Creek shopping area near exit 57. On top of that, I've been a part of 64 ribbon cuttings this year, celebrating all business openings in our community from the smallest mom and pop to the biggest big box store. In tandem with our commercial development efforts, our economic development department has had a great year recruiting new industries to our community and facilitating and encouraging growth at existing companies in our technology parks. Just this month, we've announced two brand new companies, Shinwa Auto USA and ID Plastics. We also held a grand opening for the Winkelmann Flow Forum technology. Governor Kay Ivey joined, as we celebrated the new, joined us as we celebrated the new facility, which will produce parts for the aerospace and defense industries, along with the commercial vehicle and oil and gas industries. The facility contains the nation's largest vertical flow forming machinery. These companies are a great representation of the kinds of industries our economic development team has attracted to our area. Value added, high tech companies that bring exceptional, well paying jobs to our community and invest heavily in our area. Between these and other companies and existing industry expansions, nearly 200 million in capital investments have been announced just this year. While we provide some abatements to these companies to offset their costs for building a new facility or purchasing new equipment, no taxes are abated that go towards Auburn City Schools. East Alabama Medical Center or the Lee County Youth Development Center. This means these companies will invest approximately $630,000 in our children's futures. They're also bringing nearly 300 jobs to our area. That means 300 more salaries that allow community members to shop in Auburn, generating even more sales tax revenue to support city services. Our economic development team truly impacts so much of what makes our city thrive. Our finance department handles all of these investments and the many other funding sources we receive that are on the rise, including sales taxes, business license, occupational taxes, and ad valorem taxes. They work hard to ensure that your tax dollars are spent wisely and efficiently. And for the 31st year in a row, they have received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This award recognizes the department for the great work they do creating the comprehensive annual report called the CAFR for short which gives an overview of the city's finances for residents, bond rating agencies, investors, and others. This report is a key to our financial transparency and is posted online for anyone to see whenever they'd like. The CAFR is also a key tool that rating agencies like Moody's Investor Services and Standard & Poor's use to determine our credit worthiness. 
before issuing the bonds to fund the Kerry Woods Elementary and the J.F. Drake Middle School projects, the agencies evaluated our city and gave us a AA plus rating from Standard & Poor's and a AA2 rating from Moody's. These ratings reaffirm the stable and sound management practices and careful long-term planning that involves work from every city department. As we grow, our list of capital imp improvements are expanding, which makes the low interest rates we secure because of these great ratings so very important. All of these projects and accomplishments are only possible because of the men and women who go to work in this community every day as City of Auburn employees. And I want you to know, because I've seen it firsthand, that your city staff cares about this community. They care about their work and service to this community. They know that the quality of their work matters not just to their supervisors, but to their family, to their friends, and to their neighbors. They believe as a core value that public service is a mission and calling, and I thank them tonight for their work and for their service. I promised you during my campaign that I would be an attentive listener to everything that you had to say, all of you. Listening to you is why you've seen such a deliberate process around some of the largest recent council decisions. And it's why in 2020 we'll embark on Auburn's next great community planning and visioning effort, Auburn 2040. In the late 90s, more than 200 residents came together to work on a vision for what we wanted Auburn to be as we looked into the distant future, 2020. Committees looked at issues in seven areas, family and community, public safety, utilities and technology, transportation, intergovernmental relations, growth and economic development, and education. With the slogan, Imagining a Better Community, those hundreds of citizens held public meetings and worked to formulate a 161-page plan with goals to guide us onward towards 2020. I was a part of the Intergovernmental Committee for the Auburn 2020 Plan. One of our recommendations was to partner with the county to combine the city jail and the county jail. Today that agreement is in place and the arrestees are transported to the county. The old city jail would be demolished with the old police station as soon as we open the new public safety building. As we reach 2020, I'm proud to have been a part of the Auburn 2020 plan and to know that we have accomplished almost all of the 22 goals for 2020 that were set out in that document. When we reach for 2040, Auburn's light will have shone for 200 years as we will have reached the 200th birthday of both its founding and its charter. Our computer models estimate that in Auburn 2040, we will need to plan for a community of 100,000 people. In 2040, the Outer Loop Road will be more than a plan and a project and could be substantially complete, providing more and better ways to travel Auburn and relieving the traffic in our core. Our Environmental Services and Public Works Department will have relocated to provide not only more room for their operations, but space for an expanded Boykin Community Center campus with more amenities that includes a Rosenwald School with a Black History Museum. That campus will house one of several potential branches of the Auburn Public Library that will be located throughout our town by 2040. Our Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Master Plan is already helping us look to the future in terms of urban parks, trails, green spaces, and recreational opportunities. As with Auburn 2020, it will take hundreds of residents to help us form this vision of our community in Auburn 2040. We'll look candidly at the issues and, in op and the opportunities we must pursue proactively to be successful. We'll develop a vision addressing how we want to grow and develop, how we deal with new growth, and how we can maintain and improve our city services from customer service to parks and recreation and cultural services, from development services to public safety. We'll look at how we can be even more business friendly. And I look forward to working with our council and our staff and as many, and many of you, as many of you will participate in this endeavor as well. When I talked about some of the challenges we have faced in the community in this past year, I mentioned the light that I saw in so many of you as we came together. To borrow a phrase from a former president, there are many points of light in our community. Residents who will go above and beyond in serving their community, who represent the Auburn spirit in a way that makes us all proud, who help bring us all together. These people remind us that the Auburn experience is not defined by our buildings or by our population numbers, but most importantly, by our people. By our love for Auburn and for each other. By that light we shine in and on behalf of Auburn. The Auburn spirit, the loveliest village isn't found in Tumor's Corner or the size of our population or corporate limits, but within us. 
Auburn University recently concluded a great marketing campaign with a tagline, because this is Auburn. In my campaign last year, I said, and I believe that we're all in this together. Because we are Auburn. All of us who love this place and call it home. This place matters because of you. Tonight, I'd like to close by recognizing a few individuals from our family whose light has shone particularly bright on Auburn's behalf. These individuals are the first recipients of the Mayor's Lamplighter Awards to recognize all that they have done to shine Auburn's light for us all. As I call your name, would you please come forward to receive your award? Many of you have heard me tell this story before, but I'll repeat it again as I lead into these awards. A former friend of mine and pastor, Rick Stark, told this story one day in a sermon he was given. The story is about the famous author, Robert Louis Stevenson. When Robert was a young child, he would have a hard time going to bed each and every night, and his mother kept seeing him standing up, staying upstairs, not going to bed, and he was looking out the window, and she never understood quite what was distracting to him. And so one night she went upstairs, and she watched him, and he was peering outside of his window, and she snuck up behind him, and she saw that the lamplighter was going about his work at night, quietly lighting all the lamps along the street. She said, Robert, this is just the lamplighter. Why are you looking at him? And he said, Mom, it's not just the lamplighter. He's punching holes in the darkness. I think the opportunity for all of us to be lamplighters in our community, to punch holes in the darkness of all those who need our help and our services are so vital and very important. And so tonight, um, with your blessing, we have, I have created the Mayor's Lamplighter Awards to recognize some very special people in our community. Downtown Auburn, the heart of our community, where university and city interface, the physical bullseye of our town and our gown, businesses, vehicles, people, shopping, eating, and toilet paper throwing, art shows, parades, trick-or-treat concerts, and who would have ever thought it, basketball practice, all occur within its footprint. The young and the mature, babies in strollers, students on bicycles, Visitors and residents all can be found on any given day in downtown Auburn. And the, and, and the one thing each event, each person has in common is that they can all make a big mess. Drinks and shakes are spilled, food remnants are left behind, and sometimes the trash can avoid the trash can. Why is this not a con constant issue? Because of the efforts of our first lamplighter. He is there every day before the employees arrive, before most of us are awake, he leads an effort to make sure the heart of our city is clean for the next day. Not just a job, but a passion. Never begrudging the mess that we leave behind, he goes about his work with a joyful attitude. Ask a downtown merchant. He isn't a city employee. He's not a faceless operator zoning in on a task. No, he is a partner, a friend, just as much a part of downtown Auburn as they are. The first winner of the Mayor's Lamplighter Award from the city of Auburn, Mr. Alvin Willis. Here's a note from Pick Elementary School and wonderful principal, Miss Debbie Brooks, about our next award winner. Her granddaughter attended Pick Elementary School for two years. During those two years, she volunteered for countless, countless hours in the classrooms, in the media center, and for special events. She worked tirelessly with Deanna Hooks for a few years to organize volunteers for the book fair. She gave selflessly of her time, her talents, and her treasures to support our school. 
She read to children, helped teachers in the classroom, and volunteered countless hours to support our school in any way possible. She is dependable, enthusiastic, and organized. She is a champion for children and a great role model for those with whom she works. She loves life, and her energy and enthusiasm for helping others is genuine and inspiring. I would have liked to have retained her granddaughter just to keep her around for a few more years. I'm proud to have had a chance to work with her in different capacities over the years. If we could all give back to our communities like she does, the world would be a better place. Luckily for us, she chose Auburn in which to make a difference. As a member of the faculty that make Auburn City Schools so special, she began her career in 1973 at Boykin Elementary School. She retired 30 years later in 2003. In her second year of teaching, she encountered a restless and a talkative fifth grader that challenged her. But I stand here tonight and say to you with certainty <laughs> that she made a huge difference in his life. Would you please welcome the next Mayor's Lamplighter Award winner, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Cynthia Boyd. Small business is one of the primary factors in giving a city its personality. Small business owners are also many times the leaders that spend the extra time to serve Auburn in the areas of nonprofits, civic causes, and community celebrations. As a business owner for the last 32 years, our next award winner has shown an amazing aptitude for change. Her business started as a restaurant in an art gallery. Slowly, retail items were added. After 11 years, the cafe closed. The business became home decor and gifts with a boutique upstairs. In 2006, the boutique moved downstairs. As Auburn has changed, her business has changed. As the world has changed, she has strived to keep pace. None of these changes has prevented her from investing in her community. She will soon become the president of the Downtown Merchants Association as she continues to serve on the board of the Boys and Girls Club one of Auburn's longest tenured small business owners, and certainly one of Auburn's steadiest leaders from behind the glass, Miss Donna Young. It takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. That's from E.E. E. Cummins, famous American poet, author, and playwright. As the Auburn High Choral Director since 2007, that is exactly what our next lamplighter has been doing with hundreds of teenagers each and every year. Yes, competitively, they dominate. They win grand champion awards and best vocals and best choreography and best show design and best band and even the best stage crew. But more importantly, he's doing a great job making best children out of our students. In a moment of celebration after a superb performance last year, our next award winner reminded his students that the accolades and awards do not matter if our character and, integ and integrity are not strong. Those young people proceeded to go back to every room that they had been in all day and cleaned up before they brought their trophies home to Auburn. But more than that, listen to the testimonies of the parents of the children that he teaches. His hard work planning and organization and love for his choir kids are a great example for building future leaders. He gave my daughter a taste of what it feels like to put in the work, to put a plan in for success, and to be a champion. And finally, 
we had just moved to Auburn when our normally shy and reserved daughter started high school. She joined the show choir, and it was the best thing she ever did. He brought her out of her shell, and her time in the show choir changed her life forever. Yes, it takes courage to grow up and become who you really are, and it's also great if you got somebody encouraging you along the way. The next Lamplighter Award goes to Mr. Aaron Smith. Webster defines a calling as a strong inner impulse toward a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by a conviction of divine influence. Fulfilling a career as a successful attorney was interrupted by a call to assist the children in the Auburn Housing Authority Ridgecrest Apartments. Starting as an action from a Sunday school class to assist a single mom with four boys, this became a catalyst for a calling to lead an effort to purchase property across the street from the Ridgecrest neighborhood and build a house to conduct after-school educational activities. Today, they've built a second house. Building a house today that includes computer labs, a reading room, and space to hold special holiday events with families from that neighborhood. By investing in these children's lives and by investing in the neighborhood literally, she is leading a ministry of hope to give these kids a promising future. The one-time attorney is now a part-time professor and a full-time supporter of the children at Ridgecrest because she followed her calling. Our next award winner is Ms. Renee Waltrip. And our final award winner tonight, the book of Philippians 4, 5 says, your, says, let your gentleness be known to all. A college athlete who spent 37 years working for Alabama Power Company. During his life, he let his gentleness, gentleness be known to so many in his community as a gentle leader. Through his work at his church, Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, through his work as a mason, his gentleness was known to everyone in his Kiwanis Club, at the City of Auburn through the Commercial Development Authority, the Industrial Development Board, and as a leader for the Public Safety Group in Auburn 2020. He let his gentleness be known through his work at the Boys and Girls Club, the March of Dimes, the Auburn Heritage Association, and the Greater Peace Community Development Corporation. His gentleness was known to the members of the Af African American community through his work in PACE and the National Forum of Black Administrators and many other organizations. He loved to garden and he loved to, to do, practice photography gently, including others. He passed away last month, but he gave us his legacy that none of us will ever forget, a legacy of a fantastic, gentle leader. Tonight, would you please welcome his widow, Miss Pat Eccles, and his children, Melanie and Kevin, to receive the award for Mr. George Eccles.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our program tonight. Thank you for taking time on this Monday evening to join us. Have a great week. Thank you.